hi welcome to you watching this video so for this video we're going to discuss uh, problems with respect to moment of inertia of composite uh, structures okay so determine for number one determine the moment of inertia about the centroidal x and y axis for the build up section so we have here a C channel and we have here a base plate so with respect to y axis uh, with respect to the centroidal y-axis, we know that the centroidal axis is acting at the center. Because if we're going to have it uh, with respect to y-axis, it is uh, symmetric. But in terms of c-axis, we need to determine the centroid. Okay? So in doing so, we need to determine the y-bar. Okay? So again, for this problem, we're going to need the help of our table for steel properties. So for this, uh, for this example... Or I am going to use the strength of materials for the addition by Andrew Pytel and Ferdinand L. Singer. So for this one, uh, but by the way, this is not the only book that uh, contains the properties of uh, steel sections. But in my case, this is the book that is available. So uh, we have here C8 by 11.5. So what I'm going to do is check here uh, the properties of the channel. So, let's try to search. Okay, so we have here the C section. Or the channel section. We have here C8. Oh, yeah, C8 by 11.5. The area is 3.38. So, the area here is 3.38. Now, for the base plate, it is 12 by 5. So, that is 6 inch. Uh, by the way, let's change our units here. It should be in inch. This is in inch. And this is also in inch to the cube. Okay? Now for Y bar. Now for the C channel, take note that the in, uh, for the channel rather. So for the channel, the orientation of these properties here that are being provided in this one, the orientation of the channel is standing. Okay. But for our case, it is uh, it is rotated one uh, by 90 degrees. Okay, so for the Y bar, what I'm going to use since it is it is rotated. So for the Y bar of the C11, uh, C8 by 11, instead of using here the Y bar, where is that? Uh, this is yeah. Instead of using here the y bar, I am going to use the x, okay? Because from our orientation here, this is x, okay? This distance here is x, though we tilted it, it is still x, okay? But the y here, y, uh, the y bar here is located at the center, so y is 0. Therefore, the value that I'm going to use for my... Uh, y bar is the value of x so that is x and the value of x is equivalent to 0 0.571 so 0 0.571 and by the way my ref point of reference here is at the top so this is my point of reference okay so the centroid of Let's say this is y1. Okay. Next for y2, the center of the plate to the top of the channel. So that is y2. And y2 is equivalent to the flange. What is the width of the flange from my C? Oh yeah. For the flange, flange width is equivalent to 2.26 take note that this is what we call the flange this is the web so the the, uh, the 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 length of the flange is equivalent to again that is 2.26 so he, this one is 2.26 so 2.26 plus 0.5 that is 2.76 2.76 
6. Okay, so we can now solve for the, uh, we can now solve for the y times a. So we have here 3.38 times 0.571. We have 1.9 3 okay 6 times 2.76 that is 16.56 okay so we can now solve for our y bar so the summation of area the summation of area times y bar is equivalent to the summation of y bar times the area so y bar is equivalent to the summation of y bar over a i times a divided by summation of area so we have y bar is equivalent to so what is our summation there we have 1.93 plus 16.56 we have 18.49 the summation of uh, the area is 9.38 Okay, so we have here 18.49 and we have here 9.38. So 18.49 plus, I don't know, divided by 9.38. That is 1.97. So the centroidal axis, uh, x-axis from the top, is equivalent to 1.97. Okay? So, next would be for the moment of inertia. So, let's simply copy our table. So, we have here 3.38 and we have here 6. Okay? So, for the moment of inertia of C-channel, Take note that the orientation is standing, but this time it is rotated 90 degrees. So instead of get using the ix, the ix for c, uh, where's that? Ayan. Instead of using the ix for c 8 by 11.5, I'm going to use the iy, and that is 1.32. Okay, so that is 1.32. 1.32. And that is in inch to the th fourth power. Yes, that's 1.32. Then, we have here, for the uh, tri as rectangle, we have a base of 12 times a height of 0.5 raised to the third power divided by 12. And that is 0 0.125. Okay. Now for the y, for the dy, we, we use this. So, I no, no, no. We use this minus our uh, centroid. Because it is the centroidal of the individual member with respect to the centroidal x-axis. So that is 1.97. 1.97 minus 1.32. Therefore, the distance of the centroid of the channel and the centroid of the composite section is 0 0.65. Take note, huh? Uh, our units here are incorrect. It should be in inch. It is in inch. It is in inch. And it is in inch to the fourth. Okay? Now, for the Y section, for the uh, yeah, for the uh, no, no. for the plate it is 1.97 minus 2.76 their difference is 0 0.79 okay so we can now multiply so we have 3.38 times 0.65 squared and that is equivalent to 1.42 Eight. So let's use three decimal. Then we have here six times point seventy nine squared. That is 
3.745. Okay? So, we can now compute for our IX. IX is equivalent to the summation of IX plus the summation of AD squared. Okay? And the summation is 1.32 uh, plus 0.125. That is 1.445. Then we have here 1.428 plus 3.745. 5.173. So substituting, we have 1.445 plus 5.173. Then, Ix is equivalent to 6.62 inch raised to the 4th power. Now, for the Iy, let's copy some properties. For the Iy, we have here area that is 3.38. For the area here, we have 6. Now, for the Iy, I am going back again with the book. So, for the IY of C11, instead of using 1.32, I am going to use the IX because the orientation of these properties is standing, but the orientation of our problem is it is tilted 90 degrees. So, it, IX and IY values were, uh, were to interchange. So, they are going to interchange. So, instead of IY, I am going to use IX. Ix is 32.6. So that is 32.6 there. We have here 32.6. Then, uh, this one, we have a base of 0.5 times a height of 12 raised to the third power divided by 12. And that is equivalent to 72. The summation is 104.6. Now, the dx here is 0. Okay? So, dx is 0. dx also is 0 because it, uh, it, it coincides with our centroidal x-axis for the built-up section. So, this is 0. This is also 0. So, ad squared is 0. This is also 0. Therefore, this is 0. Okay? So, IY is equivalent to the summation of IY bar. IY bar plus AD squared. So, the, this, uh, the summation of IY bar is equivalent to 104.6 plus 0. Therefore, IY is equivalent to 104.6 and this is inch to the fourth power. So, this is your IX and this is your IY. Okay, so we have here problem number 2. A built-up steel member is composed of W16 by 36. So, this is the W16 by 36 wide flange with a C15 by 40. So, this is the C15 by 40. American Standard Channel welded to its top flange. So, it is welded here. So, locate the centroidal x-axis as measured from the bottom of the wide flange and find the polar moment of inertia, radius of gyration of x and y. Okay, so let's start, uh, let's start first by determining our y-bar. So, we need to determine our uh, location of our centroidal x-axis. Okay, so let's start with uh, our wide flange. Our wide flange here is w. 16 by 36 so this is w16 by 36 and the area is 10.6 so that is 10.6 then for the c channel uh, for the channel we have c15 by 40 so c15 by 40 let's try to search here Okay, so we have here C15 by 40 and the area is 11.8. So that is 11.8. Okay, 
So, we need to determine the y bar with respect to the bottom. Okay? So, for the W uh, 16 by 36, the uh, the web, the depth of the web is 17.70 so the depth here is equivalent to 15.86 so from this point up to this point that is 15.86 okay so so the center would be at this point i know at this point uh, at this point more or less so that is 15 15.86 divided by 2. Therefore, from the bottom to the center of uh, the wide flange is 7.93. So that is the Y bar for the wide flange. Okay, now for the C15 by 40, C15 by 40. Okay, so we have it here. Take note that the channel is oriented this way it is tilted 90 degrees compared to our orientation here so we are interested in determining the x x bar okay because for the y bar on this orientation is um is zero because it is on the centroid so if we are going to uh orient is orient our channel this way it is the same we're still interested in the x so for C15 by 40, it is 0 0.777. So that is 15 by 40. Okay. 0. Point, ah, no, 0 0.777 plus, um, take note that 0 0.77 is located here. So what we're going to do is to subtract that, uh, the tick we're going to subtract it wait 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 okay so we're going to subtract it with the total depth of the built up section so the total depth of the uh, built up section is take note that our wide flange is a, a 15.86 plus the thickness of the web for the c15 the thickness of the web for the c15 is uh, web thickness is 0.52 so we add that so here 15.86 plus 0.52 here so we're going uh, we're already here on the top then from there we are going to subtract the x the, the x bar so minus 0.777 therefore from the centroid of the uh, uh, from the x uh, x x bar of the c section to the bottom of the uh, wide flange is 15.603 so that is 15.603 okay so for the for the y times a it is 10.6 times 7.93 that is 84.058 then 11.8 times 15.603 that is 184.115 so get the summation 84.058 plus 184.115 that is equivalent to 268.173 then for the area that is 10.6 plus 11.8 that is 22.4 okay so for y bar y bar is equivalent to the summation of y bar times a over the summation of area okay so y bar is equivalent to what is the value would you have 268.173 Divided by uh, 22.4. Therefore, y bar is equivalent to 268.173 over 22.4. That is equivalent to 
0.972 and that is in inch okay so next we need to determine now our ix and our iy then from there we can solve our polar moment of inertia then we can solve our radius of gyration so what are the area for the uh, for this is part one this is part two so part one is 10.6 11.8 then yeah so we also have here the y bar so that is or the distance that is the same 7.93 and that is 15.0603 uh, now for the ix since andito na tayo kay flange unahin natin si flange Instead of that uh, getting the I take note that this uh, the orient the value for this is having this orientation, since our case it is um, rotated, we are going to use I Y for I X instead of I X. So I Y I Y natin is nine point twenty three. So that is nine point twenty. Three. Then for the wide flange, punta natin si W16. Uh, w16 by 36. So W16 by 36. IX natin, we have this, 448. Take note, we're going to use the IX because the orientation of uh, this value for flanges is oriented this way and they are the same so it is oriented this way so ix therefore is equivalent to 448 ah no 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 should be here 448 okay so we can now solve this we have 10.6 times 7.93 squared 66 5 8 then we have 11.8 times 15.603 squared so that is 2872.753 so 2872.753 plus 66 58 that is equivalent to 3539.333 then for the summation of ix we have um 448 plus 9.23 that is equivalent to 457.23 take note uh the units the units here are in inches because it is in English so we have here inch 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 and inch okay so we can now solve for our ix so ix is equivalent to the summation of ix bar plus the summation of ad squared so the summation of ix bar is 457.23 plus 3539.333 and ix therefore is equivalent to 457.23 plus 3539.333 that is 3,996.56 and that is inch raised to the fourth power. Next would be our uh, I, IY. So we have here the area 10.6, 11.8. Okay, so we're ready on to tie sa ating Y flange. So what is our IY? W16. In our IY, W16 by 36, ating IY is 24.5.
So we have here 24.5. Then for our channel, instead of that, uh, determining our I, uh, instead of looking for IY, we will be using IX. So IX W15 by 40. 15 by 40, we are in IY, so I am going to use IX. That is 349. Okay. Yes. Okay. The distance of the centroid to the centroid is zero. The distance of the centroid of this flange, a uh, I wide flange, with respect to the centroidal y axis is also zero. So both of these are zero. So this is zero zero. Okay. So the total here is twenty four point five plus three hundred forty nine. It's equivalent to three hundred seventy three point five. Okay, so IY is equivalent to the summation of IY bar plus AD squared. And that is equivalent to, what is IY bar? That is 373.5 plus 0. Therefore, IY is equivalent to 373.5 and that is inch raised to the fourth power. So we need to now now we need to determine our polar moment of inertia. The polar moment of inertia is simply uh, J is equivalent to IX plus IY. So what is our IX? We have 3,996.56 plus our IY which is 370. Uh huh, 373.5. Therefore, our polar moment of inertia is equivalent to 4,370.06, and that is inch to the fourth. And our that is our polar moment of inertia. Okay. Next is. Uh, according to the problem, we need to determine the radius of gyration with respect to x and y axis. So we have here r x is equivalent to the square root of i x over area. So substituting the value, we have what is i x? 3996.3996.3996.3996.3996.3996.3996.3996.3996.3996.3996.3996.3996.3996.3996.3996.3996.3996.3996.3996.3996.3996.3996.3996.3996.3996.3996.3996.3996.3996.3996.3996.3996.3
determine the orientation of the principal axis having an origin at point C and the principal moments of inertia across the cross section about this axis. So we need to determine our IX, our IY. We need to determine uh, from the uh, uh, from the unknown, so it says here the principal moments, therefore we need to determine our I max and our I mean and the angle it makes with respect to the uh, the I max with respect to the positive x axis. Okay, and we also need to determine the, our I V and our, our I U. Okay, so let's start with our I x. So let, let's try to use this time our um, long method. No, so we have here i x is equivalent to the summation of uh, i x bar plus a d y squared. Okay, so let's start with our uh, uh, this part here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide this into three parts. No, so it would be easier what I'm going to do is to cut it so we have here part 1 this is part 2 from this point to this point and this is part 3 okay so for part 2 ix is equivalent to okay so ix is equivalent to we have a base of from this point to this point this point it is 100 um 180 times 2, that's 160. Minus 10, minus 10, that is 140. So I have a base of 140 times a height of, take note, the thickness here is 10 mm, times 10 raised to the third power divided by 12. And the distance formula is, of course, zero because the centroidal axis of this composite figure is the same as the centroidal axis of this part. Okay. Plus. Okay. Next is this one. So we have here a base of 10. Base of 10 times a height of 100 raised to the third power divided by 12 plus the area. What is the area? It is 10, 100 times 10. So 10 times 100 times what is the distance? The distance of our, the distance which is x bar from the centroid of this uh, part to the centroidal, uh, to the centroid of the composite figure. So for, take note from this point to this point uh, is Ah, no, 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 no. This is y bar. Y bar pala. Sorry, sorry. So, take note from the centroid of this big uh, part to the centroidal axis. So, this is um, this is 100. If I'm going to divide it by uh, 2, this is 50. So, it is acting here. From this point up to the bottom. But, take note, it is acting at the center. And, uh, the thickness of this is 10. So, divided by 2, that is 5. So, 50 minus 5 is 45. Okay? So, times 45 squared. Take note, this part and this part are identical. So, what I'm going to do is to simply multiply it by 2. Because they have the same properties. Therefore, Ix is equivalent to 140 times 10 raised to the third power over 12. Plus... 10 times 100 raised to the third power over 12 plus 10 times 100 times 45 squared times 2. And that is equivalent to 5.123. 5. 5.73. 5. Ix is equivalent to 5.73 mm raised to the ah uh, no 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 it is 5.73 times 10 raised to the 6 mm raised to the 4th power okay it, it is raised to the uh, 6th power okay next we have our iy 
So IY is equivalent to the summation of IY bar plus ADX squared. Okay. Now for uh, for the IY we have uh, let's first have this. I have a base of 10. So I have a base of 10 in a height of 80 minus 10. That is 70 times 2. So the height is 140 uh, cube divided by 12 plus uh, yeah, because the centroidal uh, the centroid of the uh, part, this part coincides with the centroidal axis so we don't have we do not have x x bar so that is zero okay next we have our part here so that would be um, we have a base of 100 in a height of 10 so base of 100 times a height of 10 raised to the third power divided by 12 plus what is the area the area here is 100 times 10 now this time it is the x bar so what is the distance between the x bar so this uh, from this point from the center to the outermost fiber is 80 the thickness here is 10 therefore the center is acting in between so 10 minus uh, 10 divided by 2 is 5. Tama? So 80 minus 5, that is 75. Therefore, x bar is 75 squared times 2. Okay. Therefore, iy is equivalent to 10 times 140 raised to the third power divided by 12 plus. 100 times 10 raised to the third power over 12 plus 100 times 10 times 75 squared times 2 and that is equivalent to 1 2 3 1 2 3 13.55 so that is 13.55 times 10 raised to the sixth power mm to the fourth okay so that is your ix and iy okay next would be our pxy so for the product of inertia pxy it is the summation of pxy bar plus axy bar okay so let's solve so here even though there is a small uh, uh there there is more the, there is a spandrel like shape there we are going to uh disregard that and we are going to consider it as a triangle uh, rectangle okay so since it is rectangle it is symmetric with respect to the x and y axis it is zero okay so that is zero so we have zero uh let's uh compute this these two parts here the vertical part so that is zero plus what is the area so the area here is 10 uh, 100 times 10 so 100 times 10 now for the x bar the x bar is 80 minus 5 so that is 75 from this point up to here that distance is 75 then for the y bar we have here 50 up to this point so that is 50 minus 5 that is 45 okay but take note the 75 here is negative why is it negative x bar here is negative because it is to the left of the centroidal axis okay dyan na papasok yung mga signs next would be this naman this second vertical so we have uh, for the pxy take note we are going to consider this as a rectangle it has symmetry with respect to x and the y axis therefore pxy is 0 so plus 0 plus the area is 100 times 10 
then for the uh, for the x bar from the center to the centroidal axis that is 80 minus 5 so that is 75 and it is positive because it is to the right of the centroidal axis and uh, lastly we have the y bar the y bar from the center of, of 100 is 50 going to the uh, uppermost fiber is 50 but the center is acting at uh, the centroid is acting at the center so that is 50 minus 5 that is 45 but this time 45 is negative because it belongs to the negative y axis okay next would be this uh, middle part here so for the middle part it is again a rectangle there is symmetry with respect to x and the y axis pxy is 0 now for the area for the area it is uh, 140 times 10 but take note that the x-axis is uh, coincide, uh, coinciding with the uh, centroidal x-axis likewise with the y-axis is coinciding with the centroidal y-axis therefore x bar is 0 y bar is also 0 so pxy is equivalent to 100 times 10 times negative 75 times 45 plus 100 times uh, 10 times 75 times negative 45 plus 140 times 10 times 0. It is negative 6, uh, 6 point, one, two, three, one point. So it is negative 6.7 times 10 raised to 6 and that is mm raised to the fourth power so that is pxy okay so we can now solve for our i max in i mean so i max min is equivalent to ix ix plus iy over 2 plus and minus the square root of ix minus iy divided by 2 quantity squared plus uh, pxy squared okay so to determine our i max our i max is what is ix 5.73 so 5.73 times 10 to the 6 plus what is our iy IY 13.55 times 10 raised to 6 over 2 plus we have 5.73 times 10 to the 6 minus 13.55 times 10 to the 6 over 2 quantity squared uh, plus what is pxy we have negative 6.7 times 10 to the 6th power quantity squared so i max is equivalent to 5.73 times 10 raised to the 6th power plus 13.55 times 10 raised to the 6th power divided by 2 plus the square root of we have 5.73 times 10 raised to the 6th okay 5.73 times 10 raised to the 6th minus 13.55 times 10 raised to the 6th power divided by 2 quantity squared plus negative 6.7 times 10 raised to the 6th power squared so that is 1 2 3 1 2 3 that is 17.40 uh, 17 times 10 raised to the 6th that is mm to the 4th now to get your i mean it is the same equation it's just that we need to change the plus 
with negative sign or minus sign. Therefore, I mean is equivalent to 1.88. So that is 1.88 times 10 raised to the 6. That is mm to the 4th. Okay? So the next thing is we need to determine the angle that it makes with respect to the major uh, uh, to the major axis from the positive x axis okay in doing so we can get our uh, first angle first angle this is not yet the angle that we're looking for so for the first angle we can use the formula tangent uh, 2 theta p2 is equivalent to um negative pxy divided by ix minus iy over 2 okay over 2 okay so with that what is our pxy pxy here is negative negative 6.7 times 10 raised to the 6th power divided by uh, what is our ix our ix is 5.73 so 5.73 times 10 to the 6th minus iy 13.55 times 10 to the 6th divided by 2 so let's first solve this before we uh, get the arc tangent so we have negative negative 6.7 times 10 raised to 6 divided by 5.73 times 10 to the 6th power minus 13.55 times 10 to the 6th power over 2 and that is equivalent to negative 670 over 300 91 okay so tangent to theta tangent to theta p2 tangent to theta uh, p2 is equivalent to negative 670 over 391 so So, 2 theta P2 is equivalent to arc tangent of negative 670 over uh, 391. So, we get that shift tangent uh, six, uh, negative 670 over 391. And that is equivalent to negative 59.73 degrees. Okay? So, 2 theta, uh, two theta P1 is equivalent to, take note that uh, for a pi, that is uh, 180 degrees. Okay? So, 180 degrees minus um, 59 Point seventy three is equivalent to one eighty minus fifty nine point seventy three one hundred twenty point twenty seven. Okay, so theta p one is equivalent to so uh, cross multiply divided by two that is equivalent to sixty point fourteen degrees. So this is the angle that we are looking for uh, that uh, the angle that it that we make with respect to the major uh, to the maximum moment to and from the positive x-axis to the maximum moment of inertia so this is what we are looking for so mamaya mas ma mas, mas maintindihan natin to pag uh, mas mag, mas 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 ma-appreciate natin to with our Morse circle but solve for the angle this is the angle i repeat 
theta P1 is the angle that we make with respect to the positive x-axis to the IMAX. But we are not yet done because what we solve here is the IMAX in the I-min for the principal axis having an origin at point C. So the next thing we need to solve is the principal moments of inertia of the cross section about this axis. So therefore, that is I U and I V. So with the help of this angle here that we were able to solve, which is 60.14, we can now solve your, our I U and I V. Okay. So. So we have here the product of inertia with respect to u and the product of inertia with respect to v and the product, ah no, no, the moment of inertia with respect to u, moment of inertia with respect to v and the product of inertia uv. Okay, so we can now solve our uh, iu. So iu, uh -huh. so iu is equivalent to what is our ix, ix is 5.73, 5.73. Plus 13, where is that? 13.55 divided by 2 times 10 to the 6th power sine 2 of angle. What is our angle? 20, uh, 60.14. So that is 60.14 minus the product of inertia. What is the product of inertia? It is negative 6.7 times 10 to the 6th power cos uh, sine 2 of 60.14. So IU is equivalent to 5.73 plus, wait, mali, 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 mali. Uh, Kulang tayo ng wait. Okay, so we have it here. I x plus I y over two times ten to the six. I x minus I y over two times ten to the six, and this time it is cosine two of sixty point fourteen minus the product of inertia, which is negative six point seven times ten to the sixth power times sine 2 of 60.14 okay so 13.55 over 2 times 10 raised to the 6th power plus 5.73 minus 13.55 over 2 times 10 raised to the 6th power cosine uh, 2 times 60.14 minus negative 6.7 times 10 raised to 6 sine uh, 2 times 60.14 okay IU is equivalent to 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3 so that is 17.40 times 10 raised to the 6 and that is mm to the fourth okay next is iv so for iv it is uh, 5.73 plus 13.55 divided by 2 times 10 to the sixth power minus this time it is minus 5.73 minus 13.55 divided by 2 times 10 to the 6th power cosine 2 of 60.14 plus this time it is uh, addition negative 6.7 times 10 to the 6th power sine of 2 60.14 so let's just recalibrate our uh, calculator our input the, uh, the first input that we Placed. times 10 raised to the 6th power this time it is minus then 
cosine this time it is plus and that's it okay so one two three one two three so iv iv is equivalent to 1.88 so 1.88 times 10 raised to the sixth power and that is mm to the fourth so this is your iu this is your iv next is the product of inertia of the inclined uh, with respect to the incline so iuv is equivalent to ix so 5.73 minus uh, 13.55 divided by 2 times 10 to the 6th tapos multiply it by sine 2 of 60.14 plus negative 6.7 times 10 to the 6th cosine of 2 60.14 okay so we have here 5.73 minus 13.55 over 2 times 10 to the 6th power times sine 2 60.14 plus uh, negative 6.7 times 10 raised to the 6th power cosine 2 times 60.14 and that is equivalent to wait and that is 1750.61 and that is mm raised to the fourth power so if there is the discrepancy between my solution and so your solution it might be because of uh, the rounding off because take note we're, uh, we're dealing with 10 re 10 raised to the 6th power and uh, I am just using uh, 1 or 2 decimal places okay so we were able to solve for the principal axis having an origin at point C and the principal moments of inertia of the cross section about this axis and that is IU, IV and the product of inertia and that are your final that's your final answer